Hello humanoids, welcome to Halfling Hobbies. I'm Halfling Hannah, and today we are going to talk about what to do if players cancel on your D&D session, but you were really looking forward to playing D&D, but you don't want to continue the main storyline without them there because you don't want them missing out. So I have three fun options for you to do if you ever have players cancel. These are easy things to keep on hand for even if this happens last minute. So here we go. What do you do if you have players cancel on you last minute but you still want to play? My number one suggestion is to do dream quests. Dream quests are pretty much exactly what they sound like. A god or a trickster or, you know, whatever you want at the time pulls certain members of the party during a long rest into a dream in which they have to complete a quest. Uh, this is super fun just to have on hand. You can do wacky, crazy side quests that you wouldn't wouldn't normally fit into your campaign, that you wouldn't even normally do. You can uh, have just weird things happen, and it doesn't matter because it's all a dream. I really love this idea, and you can keep it at just like one-off little side quests where it's just the normal players doing weird things, or you can go a step further with this and you can actually make it kind of like a side campaign where players can level up and gain items in the dream world as well. Uh, I love this idea because you can actually give your players uh, freedom to create attributes, like create spells, create these different things that they can do within the dream world without being concerned about it breaking your actual game because it's all a dream and anything can happen. And you can give them weird and crazy items that you would never normally give them because it's a dream. And the really fun part, you can create crazy monsters. And if they wipe out the party, it doesn't matter. It's a dream. They wake up from it in the end and you continue on your normal campaign. This is fabulous because you can do this with as few or as many players as you want. Just have some side quests on hand uh, that you can use in the event that you have somebody cancel and suddenly it becomes a dream quest session. I really foresee this being something like exciting. Your players almost want somebody to cancel so that they can do the dream quest sessions. And of course, if you need help with side quests, you don't, you're not good at writing them, you want some uh, weird and wacky side quests, I have those over on Patreon. Take a look at those. So I'm like really invested in the idea of dream quests. And this was just an idea that I had and I haven't really fully fleshed it out yet. But if you would like me to, I would be more than happy to do that. But I need to know that that's something that you guys want. So if you wouldn't mind putting in the comments down below if that's something that you would want. If enough of you comment about it, I'll make a whole series about dream quests. I'll, I'll make the side quests. I'll make everything you need for dream quests. And really when I say the right number of you, I just need one person to show interest because I'm really excited about this and I need to know I'm not the only one who's excited about this. <laughs> so yeah, number one, dream quests. Option number two, why not run a one shot in a domain of dread? So I love domains of dread because it's this own little pocket of reality. It's its own plane that's completely separate from everything else, but there are entrances to it everywhere. You can make anything an entrance into a Domain of Dread. Now, a really famous Domain of Dread would be like Barovia in Curse of Strahd. However, um, I think it's Von, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, I'm pretty sure, gives us a whole outline of how to create our own Domains of Dread. I did this in my uh, one shot called Little Dottie, which is really fun. I've run it so many times. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. But it happens in its own Domain of Dread, which is just the size of a house. Literally anything can become a Domain of Dread. They are just a um, separation, a, a, a plane that has been taken out of the material plane to contain some kind of great evil. In Barovia's case, it was to contain Strahd. In Little Dottie's case, it was to contain Little Dottie. Um, 
But yeah, you can make them anything that you want. So if you have an idea for a villain, but it doesn't fit into your campaign, maybe make it its own domain of dread. Uh, Death House in Curse of Strahd also works really well if you just want to run a two or three session thing uh, in a domain of dread. Just make Death House its own domain. That works great. Uh, again, if you want my one shot that happens in a domain of dread, just head on over to Patreon. You could actually buy it directly on Patreon without subscribing or anything. Um, but I highly recommend at least signing up as a free member because I give away free resources every month. I give away one free one pager every month. So sign up as a, a free member and get something free. And if you want to thank me for that, you can leave a like and subscribe on this video. Thanks. But all of that aside, a Domain of Dread one-shot is an excellent option if you have players that are missing a session or maybe even a couple of sessions. They're going to be out of town for a little bit. You can have your players enter into whatever Domain of Dread that it is and they have to fight their way out. Uh, another excellent option for this is uh, the Candlekeep Mysteries. Uh, a lot of the, the mysteries that are in that you could actually twist to be Domains of Dread. Excellent, excellent uh, resource if you're looking for little things that you can do that way. So highly recommend that. So Domains of Dread are a really awesome idea to uh, keep your current PCs, keep their current levels, equipment, and not have to do really any extra work, especially if you buy one shots or you um, just kind of tweak existing materials uh, to become Domains of Dread instead of whatever they were originally. Uh, then your players can just play through them like normal, doesn't require that much extra effort on you, you don't have to come up with all of the, the dream attributes, it doesn't have to become a whole thing. It can just be a one or two session thing. And then number three, if you really don't want to do very much prep at all, this is truly a last minute call out, I recommend making it Monster Week. Find your favorite super high level monster that you've always wanted to run but you never had a party high enough to run and run it. Have all of your players level up their characters to 20. Make a, a, make a version of their character at level 20 and just fight some really cool monsters. Doesn't necessarily have to have a story or an, um, a reason for it. This is just an all out boss battle encounter just because. And as I was explaining this to my husband, we were talking about this concept. He actually had a really fun idea. Uh, if your players are kind of lower level, level seven, somewhere in there, five to seven, and you start doing monster week when people are missing, I think it would be hilarious. He had this idea and I'm stealing it. I think it would be hilarious that these uh, encounters that happen end up becoming folklore about the party in your campaign world. Um, <laughs> these are exaggerated stories. Perhaps one of the players in your party has been spreading these stories without anybody else knowing, but these are absolutely just exaggerated folktale stories that start to get spread about them. Uh, so when they show up in a town, they, you're, the, the town people can say things like, oh, aren't you the party who fought three beholders? I thought you died in that encounter. <laughs> And I just think that that is a brilliant idea, be hilarious, and a great way to create some folklore about your party before they get to the levels where they're really, you know, changing the world. Um, excellent and fun way to do that. Just have fun with it. Like I said, throw some, some ancient dragons at them, throw beholders, throw all of these things that you always wanted to run and no holes bar. Because if they die, it doesn't matter. It's not a part of the campaign. Try, like literally try and kill them. I think that's like DM therapy in a lot of ways, honestly. So use the call outs as DM therapy because you, you need this. You need to kill that bard. I know you do, so do it. Just because you have some players who can't play that night doesn't mean you can't still have some fun. I highly recommend giving these a try. Try Dream Quest, try a one shot in a Domain of Dread, and certainly try to do Monster Week. It's super fun. And if you need help with any of these things, head on over to Patreon. I have so many resources and I post resources every single week. Um, I'm, I've gotten in a pretty good routine, those Patreons 
patrons on here can attest, I've gotten in a pretty good routine of posting about three times a week. So if you want a really good deal on some fun resources, make sure to head on over to Patreon. Also, if you like my shirt, I really like my shirt. I think it's a cool shirt. Perfect for summer that's coming up, tie-dye, love it. Um, if you like that, that is available at my shop that is down below. This is, of course, an original Halfling Hobbies design created by moi. I have lots of designs on there. Um, I think that they're really fun, but you know, I made them, so of course I think they're fun. So if you like this, you want to support Halfling Hobbies, that's a great way to do it. Also, becoming a patron, even a free member on Patreon is a great way to support Halfling Hobbies, and so is subscribing to the channel here on YouTube, so please do that. And until next time, my friends, I certainly hope that this gives your game advantage. Halfling Hannah here, signing out. And a big thank you and shout out to our incredible patrons over on Patreon. You guys are amazing. You are literally the reason that I can do all of these things, that I can create these resources, make these videos. Love you all. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Hope you have a fabulous week and we'll see you next time. signing up as a free member on Patreon and leaving a subscription here on YouTube. A subscription? That sounds stupid. We call them subs.